Hi, this is uh, Amr Hosseini, and I'm going to talk to you today about an interesting study that was uh, published today in the New England Journal of Medicine about use of SGLT2 inhibitors that DABA uh, glyphosate in patients with uh, CKD. As uh, we know that the SGLT2 uh, inhibitors has um, showed the, um, significant benefit with uh, efficacy and safety uh, profile in diabetic patients and also in patients with congestive heart failure. Uh, two weeks ago, there was a very nice uh, New England Journal of Medicine uh, trial published uh, called also DABA heart failure and it showed that uh, the DABA uh, was uh, you know, uh, significantly able to reduce the primary and secondary uh, composite endpoints in um, patients with congestive heart failure with and without diabetes. Also, this study is very interesting, the one that was published today in New England Journal of Medicine, because also it showed uh, the safety and efficacy of use of uh, DABA in uh, patients with CKD, even if they are not diabetic. This study is funded by AstraZeneca. I just need to say that I don't get any uh, fund or money from um, AstraZeneca or other pharmaceutical uh, companies. Uh, I'm part of uh, uh, several randomized clinical trial, multicenter trial, but none of them are related to diabetes uh, or to uh, the pharmaceutical agents uh, using, uh, you know, the SGLT2 inhibitor. So this is the study that was published today, and as you see here, the date is 24 uh, of September 2020. And um, they used a very good number of patients, more than 4,000 patients. All of them had chronic kidney disease, stage uh, 2, 3, and 4, with GFR uh, ranging between 25 to 75, uh, um, you know, per minute, per uh, 1.73 meters squared surface area. And all of them, they have Proteinuria ranging from 200 to 5,000. So some of the patients actually have a nephrotic range of proteinuria. The primary outcome was a composite of sustained decline of EGFR, at least 50% reduction of GFR, or end stage kidney disease or death from renal or cardiovascular causes. Here is the study design. So the inclusion criteria all were adults above 18 years of age with GFR between 25 to 75, and the proteinuria as we discussed, and they have a stable uh, kidney function on ACE or ARBs for at least uh, four weeks. The exclusion criteria, they excluded for some reason all type one diabetics, I don't know exactly why, and they also excluded patients with polycystic kidney disease, lupus nephritis, and associated nephritis, and any patient who are getting immunosuppressive medication in the last six months prior to the study. They uh, pre-screened the patients for two weeks, and then they random the patient either to the DABA, 10 milligram once daily, or to the placebo. So it was double-blinded placebo controlled the study, and they followed them up. And uh, uh, actually the study was terminated early because of the efficacy of, and the safety uh, of the DABA and the CKD patients. It is an uh, intention to treat study. So they calculated the power of the study uh, to uh, attain 90% power uh, to detect 22% reduction in the primary composite in the point. They need to have at least 681 events. Here is the demographic and the clinical characteristics of the participants. The age was uh, around uh, 61 in both groups and the placebo uh, controlled group and the DABA group. Uh, the majority were men uh, and uh, uh, the race, the majority were white. Um, also, um, majority were obese with the BMI around 29. Uh, smokers, just a small percentage of the patient uh, had smoking history. Blood pressure was uh, well controlled in uh, most of uh, uh, patients in this study. And the EGFR the uh, mean GFR was 43 in both groups. And here you can see the distribution of the GFR among the two groups. So very important to mention that they have about 14% of 
their participant with EGFR less than 30. This is the first study, to my knowledge, that they use the SGLT2 inhibitors with GFR less than 30. And here is other parameters, so inhibition with nephrotic range of proteinuria, they have about 10% of uh, patient, uh, patients with uh, more than one gram of protein, about 50% actually has more than one gram of protein, so the majority have a significant degree of proteinuria. Uh, very important, diabetics, uh, only 67%, so two-thirds of uh, the patients had diabetes, one-third, you know, as they are not diabetic. You remember that more than uh, 4,000 participants, so if one-third of those participants are non-diabetic, only patients with uh, CKD for other reasons, this means that they have more than 1,000 uh, CKD non-diabetic patients in this study. Cardiovascular disease, about one-third of participants had a history of cardiovascular disease, 10% had uh, congestive heart failure, and the majority of the patients were receiving either uh, ACE or ARBs, mainly ARBs. Here is a, a fascinating result. You can see the primary composite outcome, which includes at least 50% reduction of GFR or need for dialysis or a death because of renal or cardiovascular cause was significantly lower in the DABA group. The renal specific outcome was significantly lower. Also the death because of cardiovascular reason or any cause of death was significantly lower in the DABA treated group. And here is most importantly is subgroup analysis and I'm more interesting here uh, comparing diabetic to non-diabetic. I thought in the beginning diabetics will have uh, more benefit, but actually you see non-diabetics, the hazard ratio uh, for decrease the primary endpoint and non-diabetic and CKD patient without diabetes, very significant 50%. Wow, that's, that's very good to know. So it seems that we now have an evidence that we can use the SGLT2 inhibitors, not only for diabetics, but also for CKD patients without history of diabetes. Of interest also, the kidney function, patients with GFR less than 45, they have relatively decreased the uh, efficacy. So I think it's uh, important to note that it might be a good idea to use these agents early in the CKD rather than late. The degree of proteinuria for patients who had um, you know, more than one gram of uh, protein leak in your urine, the response was a little bit less. And the patient who had uh, um, you know, the systolic blood pressure was less than 130, they, they have very good um, impact. So it seems that we need to use it maybe earlier in CKD with less proteinuria and with better control of blood pressure. I think these are the subgroup of patients who can get the most uh, benefits. Also for interest here is the black population, the hazard ratio for the black population, 70, you know, 67% reduction of the uh, primary endpoint in uh, black population. Here is the GFR, so for interest, uh, you know, for the whole entire period of the study. So as you see here in the DABA group, there was uh, initial DEB of the GFR, you know, possibly because of the decrease of the glomerular filtration rate, because of the decrease of uh, intraglomerular pressure and tension. But this effect on the long term, you see that the kidney function was much better in the DABA group compared to the placebo group. So here is a summary of the primary endpoint. As you can see, the primary compound endpoint that include the 50% uh, reduction of GFR or end-stage kidney disease or death because of cardiovascular or renal uh, cause was significantly lower. You see here 39% reduction. And here's a confidence interval. It's, uh, you know, the range is very narrow. This means that it's very precise. And as you see here, the end-stage kidney disease 
the GFR more than 50% reduction was all significantly lower in the DABA uh, treated group. Here is a secondary endpoint also. Uh, here is, uh, you see a significant difference uh, between the patient who received DABA compared to the placebo group. So lower risk of uh, kidney failure and all uh, uh, cause mortality. So it's, it's very effective. What about safety? Here is a comparison with the safety profile between the two groups so that this continuation for any reason or for uh, adverse events were very similar. And also the adverse if, you know, events in general in both groups were very similar. You, you remember, uh, you know, 10 years ago, when we start uh, to uh, hear about the SGLT2 inhibitor, there was a concern about amputation. I think this concern is vanishing now, more and more study showing that it doesn't increase the incidence of the uh, peripheral vascular disease or the amputation. Zero uh, ketoacidosis. Fracture rate is a little bit higher. I would, I would be interested to study that and see what is the effect of the SGLT2 inhibitors on the bone health. Uh, Renal-related adverse outcome was very similar. Hypoglycemia was actually uh, much uh, less in the DABA group. And volume depletion was relatively higher. So I think we need to ask the patient and discuss uh, with the patient that because of the glucosuria and increased diuresis, the patient has to drink enough amount of fluids. So to conclude here, uh, it looks like the DABA and the SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, we can start to use them in CKD patients without history of diabetes. The underlying mechanism is not completely understood. But however, there is many, uh, you know, uh, proposals that the uh, benefit of this agent is not only uh, depends uh, on the uh, uh, glucose lowering uh, effect, but also because of the naturesis. You remember, this is not only working on uh, increasing the glucose excretion in the urine, but also the salt excretion. So this agent has naturesis effect, and actually this is one of the major reason that we uh, use it now in patients with congestive heart failure, and also because it uh, causes glucose-induced osmotic diuresis. So it improves the uh, serum sodium, it improves the volume, and this is actually the concern that the patient might have some uh, degree of uh, uh, hypovolemia. So we have to be careful when it comes to uh, fluid management of patient on SGL2 uh, inhibitors, um, but it reduces the intraglomerular pressure. So initially, the same like ACE or ARBs, initially you see that uh, serum creatinine might go up, up to 10, 20, maximum 30% increase of serum creatinine is acceptable. But if the serum creatinine is more uh, than 30% or the GFR is less than 30% compared to the baseline, this is a concern. But as you see, safety and efficacy uh, based on this study and other study, you know, uh, every couple of months now, we are having more and more studies um, just confirming and uh, assuring us that the use of the SGLT2 inhibitors in diabetics and now in non-diabetic patients with CKD and patients with congestive heart failure is safe and effective. Uh, I think the question now, when we need to use that, for what patient, uh, and uh, is it uh, better to use it early or late, what degree of kidney function, what patient population. I think uh, um, starting to use this agent and getting ourselves familiarized with this agent and uh, their side effects and safety profile is going to tell us more and more about this medication. I uh, really thank you for listening, and if you have any question, please feel free to contact me, my email address is amr.elhosseini.mo at uky.edu. And thank you for your attention.